Were you over in Iraq? Yes, sir. Tough duty. Yes, sir. What's your assignment now? Next day, jail. Now, what's a guy who serves his country so bravely doing getting himself in a situation like this? I wasn't thinking. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grimm. Sorry if I sound a little bit off or crappy, and it's honestly because I have been feeling crappy the past two days. Feels like I got hit by a train, but thankfully I woke up today and I felt like I could at least get out of bed. So you know what? It's time for more videos. I'm going to try to have a bunch for you out this week. But without any further ado, today's TCAP creep is actually a Marine, and this guy got caught just two months after he got married. So yeah, needless to say, he threw a beautiful life that he was making away for this one stupid act that he did, and it's beautiful to see. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Make sure you drop a like if you enjoy my content, and let's get right on into it. Last week, we reported on a Marine Corps sniper who showed up with a in his trunk. Now, here comes another Marine. Jeez, what an intro. Oh my god, Chris. Yeah, so I don't think I've reacted to that one they were teasing in the beginning. Sounds absolutely insane, but now this is the second Marine that they have caught on this show up until this point, and I know it's kind of weird to nitpick what their careers are outside of, you know, their general creepiness on this show, but I think it's very good at pointing out the fact that these types of creeps and dangerous people exist in all walks of life, no matter the amount of, you know, respect their job or career might have, or prestige that it might have. That does nothing to change the fact that they could or couldn't be a creep. You know, there's often this huge misconception that it's only like the lowest forms of society, and that just isn't true. We've had doctors on this show, and now having a member of the Marine Corps is just insane to me. Hey, there you are. He's 25-year-old Yancey Wallace, a newlywed. He and his wife, who happens to be in the Air Force, have only been married for two months. And yikes, this dude just got married two months ago. A massive life change for him and the start of a beautiful relationship that is without a doubt going to be ended and completely destroyed after he is shown on this show and millions of people across the country get exposed to his creepiness. Just another way to show that these guys are so controlled by their urges at this point. You know, the average person two months into marriage isn't thinking about cheating on their significant other, let alone in this way. So this obsession must have been just eating away at him. Obviously, that's not an excuse. I'm just trying to show the true depth of the depravity, if that's how you pronounce it, of these guys. And what's really creepy, a little side note, often these usernames are very hilarious, but this dude's username is Persuasion2032. I don't know why, but the use of the word persuasion in his profile name is really freaking creepy on there. It's like he's posting an ad for his creepiness, as if he's telling all these idiotic kids that should not be on this, you know, message board, hey, I'm gonna talk to you and persuade you to do something you shouldn't do. I bet he has alt accounts like coercion or something. And I was thinking it'd be really, really hot if you got in the hot tub and waited for me. Does that sound okay? I didn't bring that to this one. Oh man, Ugh. these guys talking like they have so much charisma and swag is really what creeps me out too. I don't have anything to swim in. <laughs> I guess you know what that means. Like, oh my God, this dude just makes my skin crawl. Also, every single time we have seen this specific show in this investigation, how freaking terrifying is it that almost nine times out of 10, they walk back with the decoy who says they're about to go change. And that's what, you know, kind of blows up the investigation. Like he is literally walking into the back wall here where Chris Hansen and the producers are sitting because he's trying to to follow this decoy and sneak a peek. Obviously these dudes are dangerous, but that just shows and proves how far he's willing to go and how much he's wanting to make this happen for real. Yo, real quick, before we get to the rest of the video, I just want you guys to check out my Patreon where you can get bonus face cam content on stuff I simply can't cover on YouTube. Huge shout out to our Grim Squad Overlord, who not only is an insane supporter for holding down that role for months now, but sent me some sick cracking gear for Christmas, so I really appreciate that. You're a legend, Andy. Anyways, let's get on to the rest of the video. How you doing? Why don't you have a seat right over there on the other side of the bar? What are you up to? It looks like a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Yep, I guess uh, that's kind of an understatement. Like, you, you're in a lot of trouble, but also your marriage is kaput, your military career is done for, and your entire life as you know it has been changed. So yeah, you're getting in trouble with the law, but you gotta think about all the other ramifications here. Like, all your friends and family are gonna hate your guts, or maybe some of them might continue to support you through blind ignorance, but for the most part, everybody in your life will no longer be friends with you now, as it should be. I love how his head is hanging down, too, as soon as he sees Chris. I don't know if he recognizes him so far, but obviously, when you walk in the back here and see these uh, cameramen, and their monitors and everything, you kind of know what's up or what's going on here. It looks like a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. How so? Because I'm stupid. Because you're stupid. Yes, sir. Why are you stupid? Because of what I was doing. 
Yeah, you are a pretty big dumbass. I will agree with you on that. I love also how the total inflection of his voice has completely changed. In the beginning here, he was so confident talking to this decoy, trying to swagger up, being like, yeah, I guess I could take a dip in the hot tub, but low key, I didn't bring any trunks. Uh, uh, uh. And now he's just super quiet, like, I'm such an idiot. I don't know why I did this. Like, bro, this isn't an ASMR channel. Speak with your freaking gut, please. I know you realize you're about to get arrested possibly for a long time, but still be a man and look Chris in the eye as he's roasting you here. What were you doing? Dumb. Were you over in Rock? Yes, sir. Tough duty? Yes, sir. What's your assignment now? <sighs> Looks like jail. <laughs> oh, no. <coughs> Sorry guys, I don't think you're gonna get any signature grim laughs in this video as it is leading to me coughing and coughing is about the most painful thing for my body right now. But that was an amazing little <laughs> finishing of his sentence. Uh, his new assignment is probably a lot of jail time. That is correct. Now I hope the amount of times that they're mentioning that he's a Marine, they're not gonna go with this route that I think he could try to take, which is like, oh, I served and I saw some messed up stuff and the PTSD is what led me to do this because I am a firm believer as, as many of you are as well probably that there is nothing Nothing that could have happened to you in your life that can excuse you doing this to somebody else. There is no amount of trauma or bad things that can happen to you where it justifies you trying to attempt to speak to somebody of this age online and meet up with them to do God knows what. It just doesn't exist. So I'm really hoping they avoid that angle and instead I hope he just kind of whimpers away with his tail between his legs like I'm expecting him to do. Now what's a guy who serves his country so bravely doing getting himself in a situation like this i wasn't thinking and he's really just playing up this dumb angle like okay maybe you might not be that intelligent but you still know right from wrong and you still know this is one of those major laws that absolutely nobody breaks like in every country for the most part this type of thing is just frowned upon so heavily like way more than most other crimes so you can be dumb all you want but it does not excuse this here's the kicker to this whole thing yancy is that in the conversation you say this I just hope this isn't all too good to be true, hee <laughs> hee. No, no laughs. Oh, God. <laughs> Hearing Chris say hee hee in this message is amazing. And now what I'm hoping is this is a lead up to him literally saying that he knows what Dateline is or knows that it might be a sting. Usually they say that in these chats and that is the best part when they literally self prophesize their own downfall. I think the same thing, she says. Like you're not going to come or something. I, was. I am. He he. I watched Dateline the other night about guys when they all went to jail. Let's go, dude. Okay, so he does know the show, and that also would explain why he really, really changed his emotion as soon as he saw Chris. Like I said, obviously, even if you don't know what the show is, you could put two and two together if you're in these dudes' shoes and understand you're about to be in big trouble. But him knowing directly who Chris Hansen is and knowing the um, not only reach of this show at the time, but the punishment for everybody in line before him that had been caught doing the same thing had to been a massive blow to this dude and explains why he he is just freaking out internally right now. Like, I'm worried this dude's gonna have a heart attack. And look at me. And look at you. Yes, sir. So you've seen the show. Yes, sir. What'd you think about the show when you saw it? I don't know why I'm here. God, and he just really wants pity from us. Every answer is just so angst-ridden. I don't even know why I'm here. You know, existence is just such pain. I'm just such an idiot. I've never done anything right. It's been that way since I was a youngin. Like, bro, okay, we don't need this sob story. Nobody feels bad for you in this situation. If anything, we're all laughing, like hysterically. I mean, don't you think that would have been a little bit of a warning? Jim, just relax once, sir. I don't want to do this. I didn't think it was for real. I just thought it was all a game online. All a game. Oh my God, and now he's going with this defense. This is actually, in my opinion, one of the weakest defenses that these dudes commonly come up with, which is, it was all just make-believe. It was just a game we were playing online. That is BS. As soon as you drive any amount of time over to this house and show up, especially with the confidence that he had showing up here, that was very real for him in that moment. And had they not been here, it would have been a very real experience, unfortunately. And he could hide behind the anonymity on the internet and say, you know, it was just a chat. I honestly didn't think anything was gonna come of it. I didn't think it was real. But that completely doesn't make sense when he was so excited to see this decoy You could see the elation on his face when he really thought that he was finally gonna get his chance with someone like this He's also squirming like so much because he knows this all ends with him being arrested And I'm pretty sure he just wants a speed run to that portion because that has to be one of the most stressful parts of this entire ordeal Well, what do you think should happen to you Yancy? I could say lesson learned be on my way I could say kick me in the ass 
wait, have you seen this show, buddy? Because that has never been an option for anybody here. The only thing that ever happens is they get arrested. It's not like it's a multiple choice question. He thinks either Chris Hansen can physically just square up with him and destroy him real quick, which that would be hilarious to see. With all the influencer boxing stuff, I need like the 50 something year old Chris Hansen that's out there right now to get absolutely swole. I don't care if he's on his liver king, you know, gear type beat. Whatever it takes, he needs to get massive and just square up with these creeps. That would be amazing primetime boxing, I tell you what. But sadly, it was not an option back then and isn't an option now. And uh, the other option he has is maybe he can just say, oh, lesson learned. Guys, let's just let him be. You know, he served our country and everything. He's really a good guy deep down. He's just made some questionable decisions like this one, which also doesn't work that way. We have no idea if this was this guy's first offense. Hopefully it was, but in most cases, it definitely isn't. And we've seen before, if they do let people go like that dude very early on that I reacted to that got caught at the McDonald's the next day, these dudes are just ready to strike again as soon as they get, you know, a little bit of leeway and a little bit of forgiveness. It just doesn't work to make them not reoffend. What do you think would have happened uh, had there been a girl here and the two of you were alone? Nothing. I was too scared. Well, you know what happens next. But he claims, you know, nothing would have actually happened because he was just too scared. We saw the fear when he walked in, right? The guy was definitely really worried. It's not like he was on top of the world, the happiest he's ever been. I bet he was happier on this day, walking up and seeing this decoy, thinking this was real, than he was on his marriage or his wedding that he just held two months ago. I, I will honestly say that was probably a better moment for him. And now it's turned into the worst day of his life. So that's beautiful. I'll go to jail. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. And as obviously you suspected, we're doing a story on adults meeting uh, Whoa, and for a first time ever, this dude just assumes the position of being arrested while the cameras are coming out. Again, I don't know if he's actually fully seen this show like he said he did in the chat, because that is not how this works. First, we got to see your face, embarrass you by putting these boom mics all in your face, and then you walk out to the front yard where you get arrested. So let's skip to that part, because it's always absolutely beautiful as we wrap this one up. As he makes his way out of the backyard, he knows his time left as a free man is extremely short. Police department, come on out. So yeah, this dude gets arrested just like all the other ones in his place. And we actually get a rare clip of him being interrogated by the police where he perfectly spells out how big of a blunder this was for him to have done this or to have been speaking to this decoy in the first place, let alone show up. Let's hear that real quick because it is some amazing self-reflection that we don't often get from these morons. I just ruined my entire life over something I knew was wrong. Everything I've worked for up until now and here on out is destroyed because I didn't use my head. And that is beautifully poignant way of putting it. This dude has completely thrown away any achievements he's worked for his entire life. I'm sure he worked very hard in the Marine Corps. I believe he said earlier he went to Iraq, which is crazy. And his marriage and everything, all of his achievements are now just, there's no point to them because he is forever going to be known as that guy that was on TCAP and was just a major creep that was out into the entire country. So that's a beautiful way to end it, I think. Honestly, this was an insane episode. It's always crazy when we have people who had insane careers before going into this show. And again, apologies if my voice sounded off this entire time. Um, it was honestly kind of hard getting through this voiceover, but I'm feeling a lot better. So I'm going to try to crank out some videos for you guys for the start of this year, like I was saying. Anyways, as always, check out my Patreon. Thank you for everybody who supports me over there. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.